Okay, so now we're going to tackle the sort of top cap for the house. Um, I already have a couple that I modeled in here that I'm going to use, but I just want to show you really quickly how I modeled those. So, um, so we'll start with that. Uh, we started with a pipe. So I'm going to go to create polygon pipe. And I'll just pull that out so you can get an idea of what that looks like. Um, and then I just sort of fiddled with the settings a little bit. Uh, we can go ahead and rotate that uh, 90 degrees. Um, and then we're going to play around with the, the height, the radius, and the thickness. Now I did uh, come up once I sort of had this um, about where I wanted it to be. Um, I did go ahead and just move this up to the top of the house to sort of scale it to size. So obviously that there is a little bit too big. So we just want to scale that down. Quite a bit, maybe something along the lines of that. Um, <clears throat> And then I just deleted the bottom half of it. So we can just go to face, select those bottom half faces, delete. Um, that does leave a hole at the bottom. So what we're gonna do with that is just select one of those edges in that hole. And I'm gonna click on my fill hole uh, button here that's also found under mesh fill hole. And we'll just hit our G key to do that again. And then I just sort of, you know, shape that uh, the way that I wanted. So I took these two faces here, kind of pulled those down, out a little bit. Um, I went ahead and beveled everything except for these sort of diagonal edges. So I gave those just a slight bevel. And then uh, once I had something like this, you know, it's in position, that looks good. Then I just duplicated it three times. Um, and then I went through and added, you know, divisions um, and just made each one of them a little bit different, gave each one a slightly different variation, you know, something along the lines of this, and just made each one look a little bit different. So that's basically just uh, really simply how I created those. Um, and then when I was done, um, you want to, again, before you turn anything into a mash object, it needs to be zeroed out in the center of the grid, center pivot, uh, history deleted, all that stuff. So uh, because we haven't deleted our history yet or centered our pivots or fr frozen our transforms yet, um, we can really easily just select these three and zero out our trans translates. And those will just pop right back into the center of the grid. And then we can uh, delete history, freeze transforms, and then they're, they're all good to go. Now, I already have three here that I'm going to use um, that I already made, and I named those top shingles. So, um, so we're going to use those. So uh, again, I'm going to use MASH uh, just because it makes things so much easier um, when you're trying to randomize things. So we will uh, go ahead and just select that top one. We'll make our MASH network. Um, and what I'm going to do is go ahead and take that whole repro mesh uh, model and just move that all the way up to, actually it doesn't want to let me move it. So <laughs> I'll probably need to do like an offset. I wonder if I can move, I don't think I can move the, uh, the mesh either, or yeah, the mesh node. So what we can do is we can just offset it with the mash node. So um, we'll go into mash. Um, 
go to our attribute editor. Um, we'll leave this uh, distribute alone for now. And I'm just going to go ahead and um, we could do a transform node as well. I think that might be um, ideal. We'll try a transform node, just something different. And then I want to transform this uh, position and Y. So I'm just going to increase that until that starts to poke up there. Get kind of in position like that. And then I can also, um, we'll translate that in Z as well to get that sort of in the front of our house like that. You can easily just do this um, on the ground if you like, and and then just move it the way we've done everything else so far. Um, I'm going to just knock this down to one for now, just so I can kind of get this in position a little bit better with my transform node. So I think that looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit higher. <clears throat> and then we'll go to our distribute. Then we can bump up some divisions or some points here. Um, I want to translate this not in X, uh, not in Y, but in Z. And we're actually going to go into the negative because that's going the wrong way, but we can go into the negative. So let's go something like negative 100. So probably even need to go much more than that to go all the way across. Let's try negative 2000. Okay, so then we can just tweak that a little bit. And what I wanna do is I wanna get the start and end point correct first. And then, then I'll adjust the number that I have. So 15 looks like they're pretty much butting up against each other right there. And let's do negative, negative 1100. Let's try negative 1150. So that's pretty good. Negative 1150 works. Well, I do want a little bit of space in between them because they're going to be randomized a little bit. So um, so that looks good. Now we can jump in and add our um, ID node. So we have three different variations here. We're going to do random and then we'll go to our repro node and throw in my other shingles. So we get those randomized. <clears throat> Make sure I have those set to random. I want them to stay linear distribution, but I want my ID to be random. Random. And then I want to add a random node to kind of vary, vary their size and scale and stuff like that. So there's a random node. You want to be careful as always about rotation. Rotation will kind of go out of whack if you aren't careful with your rotation, but I think a little bit of rotation would be good and a little bit of uh, uniform scale just a tad so again I don't want it to look too too chaotic and you know if I notice that I don't really like you know for example we have uh, three of these 
same ones right next to each other, two of them here. So maybe I want a different randomization. I'm just going to go to my, uh, my, my uh, ID node because that's what's randomizing the different shingles. And I'm just going to change the seed until I find something that I like a little bit better. So I think something like that looks a little bit nicer. And this, um, and you know, again, we can always just change these slightly once we, we get them. So that looks pretty good there. Um, and then what I'm going to do for this portion is just kind of use these guys. So uh, just like we've been doing in the past, I'm going to make it to where it's no longer a mash node. So I will delete the history on it and that will disconnect it from that mash node. Then I can just uh, delete it <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and do a mesh separate to make them all individual objects. And then I can say, let's take this one and uh, let's go ahead and center the pivot on all of them. And then I can take this one and kind of we'll angle this one down a little bit. So then we can kind of just manually adjust them if we don't like their sort of orientation the way that they are. <clears throat> and mainly I'm just angling um, that one down a little bit because I don't want to be able to see inside. Right, we're going to be looking at the house like this and I don't want to be able to see inside of that. So that's why I've angled that down a tad. And now what I'm going to do is just take like a few of these. So I'm going to find a stretch that I kind of like. So we'll take like these six or seven shingles. Um, and I'm just going to control D to duplicate them. And then I'm going to uh, we'll go ahead and just combine them together or we can just group them together but I'm just going to combine them and that way I can just really easily rotate them around put them in position And then I can like say take this guy and do something like that with him. And then I'll just separate them again, mesh separate. And then I can just kind of again will uh, center their pivots. And then I can just individually. Move those around. Maybe I'll just get rid of that one altogether. And we have a couple more. One more right there that we can get rid of. <clears throat> so that's it. So then what I'm going to do is we'll select that entire two groups of these guys. This one. Uh, and we're, we want to, we'll just do the whole scene. So we're going to do edit, delete all by type history again to clean up our entire scene uh, and then I'm just going to grab these guys and throw them into that group and then I can delete that empty group we'll rename this to top shingles and then I'm going to just kind of organize everything else so uh, we'll hide these other two shingles and we want to take all of these and just throw them in our um, See, I thought I had a group here for these shingles. 
bricks, chimney, chimney bricks. I guess I didn't. So let's take all of our old mash uh, models and group them. And we'll name this mash models. And then I'm just gonna throw all of our old mash models. Middle, middle mouse click, drag. We'll do our shingle sample too. Throw that in there, keep things clean. All right, so that's looking really good. I'm kind of excited about how that's looking so far. Now, since we have a little bit of extra time in this video, there's one other little neat thing that I kind of want to show you that you can do um, to just add sort of like a little bit of grunge or funk to uh, certain parts of your model. Like I'm looking at my stairs here and I kind of think that they just look to compared to everything else in the house. It's kind of uh, beaten up and and sort of chaotic. Um, I feel like my stairs look a little bit too clean. Um, so what I can do is add like a little, like maybe just a model that would be dirt, right? So I can come in. What I want to do is just grab my, um, actually, we'll just do it with a cube. So we'll just start out with a cube. And I'm just going to make a cube like this and we will increase the divisions to something like that. <clears throat> and then I'm going to take my sculpt tool. So I already have in my, my toolbar here, this uh, grab tool. Um, you can find this in your sculpting menu here as well but I just use the grab tool a lot. So I put that in my mega shelf. So I'm gonna use the grab tool. And if you hold down shift, you'll kind of smooth things out a little bit. So what you can do is just kind of move things around. Let's go ahead and focus on that. So what I can do is kind of move this into position something like that, and then use my grab tool. Do something like that there, and then I can just duplicate that. And then we'll move this down to the other stair. And then again, I'll use my grab tool to kind of just sculpt and manipulate this. And then I can basically just give this another uh, kind of shader. So it... Um, it will look to be like a slightly different color. So I may add to that, but I just kind of wanted to point out that you can be, you can get really creative with how you want um, like grunge and stuff to, to look in your scene. Um, at the end of the day, there's, you know, there's not very many wrong ways to do something. If it works, if it looks good, and that's the main thing, if it looks good, at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. Um, now, with exception, there's certain things where if you're animating something or if you have to optimize it for a video game or something like that, there's other factors that you have to keep in mind. But uh, when you're doing something for your portfolio, when you're just going to do a render of it um, and it's not, it doesn't need to be optimized for a video game, um, you're just trying to make a cool looking picture. Um, at the end of the day, it, it, that's all that really matters. If it looks good, then it is good. Um, if it looks wrong, then, you know, obviously you got to fix it, but there's all kinds of li little 
cheats and tricks like that you can do to kind of add a little bit of realism and detail to uh, to your models. So let's take a look at this without the wireframe. And uh, we can see that we have a little bit of extra detail there on our stairs. Now this is all looking great. I'm really happy with the progress of this. Obviously the next step is doing the doors and windows. Um, <clears throat> I think for that I will do another time lapse. Um, I'm basically just going to be modeling with cubes like I've done in the past, have you, as you've seen over and over again. So I don't think I need to explain my way through that um, unless I unless I do something a little bit different, but I don't think I'm going to. I think for the most part, I'll be modeling that with just cubes, um, like I've done all the, the wood parts in the house so far. So uh, that'll be the next video. We'll do a little time lapse of me creating uh, windows and doors. And then I think we're going to be done with the house. We can start um, adding some color to it, uh, talking about shading, um, and... Uh, and then we'll work on our environment that's going to go around the house.